Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. K. Anil Kumar, Assistant Professor from Indira Gandhi National Open University, New Delhi. So student, today we are going to talk on module Religion and Magic from the paper Sociocultural Anthropology. From this module, you will able to learn to understand the explanatory and functional theories of religion. You also learn the different types of religion prevailing among the primitive society. You also learn about the magical practices in prehistoric period. You will be able to understand the different types of magic and the principles underlying. So, religion has an inherent and unchanging meaning. It has suggested the pursuit of the holy grail and untending quest for desirable something lying perpetually in the distance. A religion is an organized collection of beliefs, cultural systems, worldviews uh, that relate humanity to an order of existence. So many religions have narrative symbols and sacred histories that aim to explain the meaning of life or universe from the beliefs about the cosmos and human nature. People may derive morality, ethics, religious laws or prefer lifestyle. Anthropologists have commonly called religion a cultural universe. One of the many things including marriage, incest, prohibitions, the family and the social organizations found everywhere in the world. No society ever observed has failed to display something readily identifiable to scholars as religion. Magic is use of rituals, symbols, actions, gestures and language that are believed to exploit supernatural forces. The belief in and the practice of magic has been present since the earliest human cultures and continues to have important spiritual, religious and medical role in many cultures of the today. Definition of religion. According to the philologist Max Miller, the root of English word religion, the Latin religio was originally used to mean only reverence for God or the gods, carefully pondering of divine things, pity. The typical dictionary definition of religion refers to a belief in or the worship of a god or gods or the service and worship of god or the supernatural. Edward Burnett Taylor defined religion as the belief in spiritual being. The anthropologist Clifford Grid define religion as a system of symbol which acts to establish powerful pervasive and long-lasting moods and motivations in men by formulating conceptions of a general order of existence and clothing. These conceptions with such as an aura of factuality that moods and motivations seem uniquely realistic. The sociologist Emile Durkheim in his seminal book The Elementary Forms of the Religion Life defined religion as a unified system of beliefs and practices relative to sacred things. Explanatory Theories of Religion Anthropological theories of religion have been concerned mainly with examining the content of various conceptions of the supernatural as prevalent in different societies at different times. The earlier anthropologists also trace the evolution of religion from cruder to developed forms. Recent theories concentrate on outlining the functions of 
religion animism the earliest anthropological theory about primitive religion seeking to trace its origin and explain it was given by edward bernard taylor he said that although the origin appears to be multiple yet there is only one idea underlying it with belief in soul that is anima hence the name animism for this theory taylor conjecturally arguments ran as follows primitive man had certain experiences in his dreams he engaged in various types of activities even while he was sleeping he met his dead ancestors in dreams and had hallucinatory experiences about them and other beings while he was awake he heard the echoes of his own voice he saw his own reflection in ponds pools and rivers and he failed to disentangle himself from his shadow even while he was having these understandable experiences something of much deeper import must also have happened periodically and sets the primitive man's mind thinking people must have died this catastrophe must have been a great challenge it was thus the belief in such an unseen thing or power which kept people alive when it was in them and made them dead when it left their bodies emerged such a thing or a power is called soul but how was it that sleep so very like death was not that and how was it that people had all these various experiences in dreams and while awake heard echoes and saw shadows and reflections taylor says primitive man must have thought there must be two souls in a human being that is a free soul which could go out of him and have experiences and a body soul if it left the body resulted in its death the former may have been associated with the represented by breath and shadow the latter by blood and head primitive man must have come to the conclusion that when the body soul left the body permanently the person concerned dead and his soul become a ghost or a spirit so taylor believed that an attitude of ev and reverence towards this intangible and non material spiritual beings forms the core of the earliest form of primitive religion the spiritual beings are not under control and have therefore to be propitiated less should do harm and in order that they may render help thus ancestor worship was the earliest temples animism consists of such a belief in the role of spiritual beings in human life it is a kind of polytheism taylor believed that in course of time this was evolutionary development in religious beliefs and forms and the progress was from polytheism towards monotheism next animism and manism taylor's earliest critics said that animism is a later development in the history of religion they postulated a pre animistic stage when religious beliefs supposedly consist mainly in the belief that everything has life and is animate prominent among these writers were pius and max muller the latter's name is associated with the theory of naturalism more recently merit evolved a special form of animatist theory which he called manism merit said that the entire religious life of the primitive is born out of their belief in a certain ununderstandable 
impersonal, non-material and unindividualized supernatural powers which takes abode in all the objects, animates and inanimate that exist in the world, lies more or less beyond the reach of the senses but is manifested as a physical force or such other excellences as a man can think of in himself, others and also in objects around him. It may differ in intensity, the degree in which it is present in a person or in an object, but in essence it is always the same. Such a set of beliefs merit called animatism or manaism. After the term mana used by Malinations to designate this force, Majundar's description and analysis of the conception of Bonga among the Ho falls in line with Merit's theory of primitive religion. Some North American tribes call this power orenda. It is elsewhere known as Aran or Vakua. Next, naturalism. Max Muller said that the earliest form of religion must have been worship of objects of nature and evidence in support of such a view has come in from archaeological excavation conducted in Egypt and elsewhere. It is maintained that an attitude of awe or love and reverence towards objects of nature is born as a result of diseased mind which invests lifeless things with life and all the power that is associated with life. This error of mind is, according to this theory, born out of defective language. Such linguistics errors as the sun rises and sets or thunder sends rain or the tree bear flowers and fruits gives rise to belief in some power inherent in the suns, thunders, trees, etc. So, for as it is maintained that objects of nature were worshipped, no difficulty arises, evidence in favour of such a practice is heavy. But any claim to such worship being the earliest form of religion or the explanation given is not convincing. There is no proof to show that various conceptions follow linguistic expression about the same. On the contrary, linguistic expression may follow certain already existent ideas. The merit and useless of these various theories emerges when they can taken together as each of them expresses some essential truth regarding primitive religion. Functional Theories of Religion Maloneski and Ratcliffe Brown have given functional explanation of primitive religion. Maloneski points out with reference to the Trobian Islanders that religion is intimately connected with various emotional states which are states of tension. For example, quite a few of their magical and religious practices center around the fishing expeditions. There are the outcome of the state of fear which a possible disaster on the seas gives rise to. Similarly, hate, greed, anger, love etc. may arise due to various situations in man's life. These situations create stress and strain and if permitted to exist over a long period of time, frustrate all action. A human being has to be an acting individual and normal action is not possible in an emotionally upset state of existence. Religion is made use of in such a situation as a tool of adaptation. Its purpose is to purge the human mind of its stress and strain. That is, it is cathartic in its action. In other words, religion has the function of 
bringing about readjustment between man and the supernatural in upset states of existence it is a device to secure mental and psychical stability in an individual's life radcliffe brown takes a different stand the function of religion he says is not the purge fear and other emotional strains from the human mind but to instill a sense of dependence in it he says that ultimately the survival of the group of the group is more important than that of the individual and if the latter has to make some sacrifices it is in his own interest to do so because without social survival individual survival is not possible however the individual does not seem to realize this always and he seeks to chart out an individual course of action in each individual what to do this there would be utter confusion and quiesce and no organized activity would be possible adherence to a norm of behavior is essential in terms of social survival and it is fear of supernatural control and punishment as also the anticipation of support in the case of socially approved conduct that brings about this adherence therefore the function of religion is to create a twofold feeling of dependence on society and thereby obtain the individuals concurrence with the social norms the ultimate aim being social survival the function of religion is the contribution it makes to that total activity which is designed to perpetuate society radcliffe brown's and malinowski's sociological explanation are derived in part from durkheim's theory of religion durkheim says that religious notions are born and conceived of when we find the social group collecting together for festivals and other social gatherings social life on such occasions is at its in tentest and impresses the human mind with the transcendentalism and omnipotence of the group it is conceived of as the source of all that man has and all that man is religion is the recognition of the superiority moral and physical of the collective over the individual now students we will learn about magical practices in prehistory appearing from aboriginal tribes in australia and new zealand to rainforest tribes in south america bush tribes in africa and pangan tribal groups in western europe and britain as personified by merlin based on welsh prophet merdin welt some form of shamanism and beliefs in the spirit world seems to be common in the earlier development of human communities according to joseph campbell the ancient cave paintings in lascaux may have been associated with the magic of the hunt much of the baby lonian and egyptian pictorial writings characters appear derived from the same sources although indigenous magical traditions persist to this day very early on some communities traditional from nomadic to agricultural civilizations and with this shift the development of spiritual life mirrored that of civic life so just as the tribal elders were consolidated the and transformed into monarch and bureaucrat so to the shamans and adepts evolve into persistently caste this shift is not in naming alone it is at this stage of development the highly codified and elaborate ritual settings the stage of formal religions begin to emerge such as the funeral rites of egyptians and sacrifice rituals of the babylonian persian adjek and 
Maya civilizations. Magic, meaning types and principles. Magic is the use of rituals, symbols, actions, gestures, and language that are believed to exploit supernatural forces. The belief in and the practice of magic has been present since the earliest human cultures and continues to have an important spiritual, religious, and medicinal role in many cultures today. Magic is often viewed the suspicions by the wider community and is sometimes practiced in isolation and secrecy. In non-scientific societies, pursued magical attack is sometimes employed to explain personal or societal misfortune. On the basis of evidence collected from all part of the world, Fraser found that magical formulae are based on two principles, that is, like produces like and once in contact, always in contact. He has reduced principles into laws. The first he calls the law of similarity and the magic associated with it homeopathic, imitative or mimetic magic. The second is called by him the law of contact or contagion and the magic associated with it contagious magic. On these two principles are based all the various magical rites found in primitive society. All types of magic are labeled sympathetic by Fraser because he considers them to be based on the principle of sympathy between cause and effect. Magic, like modern science, is based on the observation of and experimentation on cause-effect phenomena. Present some of these conclusions in a diagram. If you see a diagram, Fraser's divide magic into two types. That is, practical or magic as a pseudo-art and another is theoretical or magic as a pseudoscience. In practical, again he categorized into two, that is, positive, sorcery, witchcrafts, etc. And another is negative, that is, taboos, etc. Example of magical practices. In Chota Nagpur, some tribal groups believe the thunder with its rumbling noise is the direct cause of rain. Therefore, when they want rain, they go to a hill top, sacrifice a hen or a pig and then start flinging down stones, rocks and boulders down the hill, expecting rain to follow the rumbling noises created by their action just as it follows thunder. The whole light fire expecting rain to come out of the cloud of smoke that is Raise to the skies. These are cases of homeopathic magic. So, also was the human sacrifice of cone. It is believed that as the tears roll down the sufferer's eyes, the blood gushes forth from his wounds, so will rain come. A similar belief connecting tears with rain was the basis of a now banned ceremony of the Theri Gharwal Ravaltas who used to make a person suffer or ordeal as a consequence of which tears would stream out of his eyes and even on occasions cause death by strangulation. Fraser's collection of sorcery and taboo in the two types of magical behavior has been widely followed folk explanation of both that confirms his insight is plentiful. Fraser's own analogy of science and medicine, however, stood in his way. One of the most famous passage from the Golden Bug runs, Magic is a spurious system of natural law as well as fallacious guide of conduct. It is a false science as well as an about you art. 
regarded as a system of natural law that is a statement of the rules which determine the consequences of events throughout the world it may be called theoretical magic regarded as a set of percepts which human beings observe in order to compass their ends it may be called practical magic at the same time it is to be born in the mind of the primitive magician known one magic on its practical side he never analyzes the mental process on which his practice is based never reflects on its abstract principle involved in his actions fraser said the savages pursued sympathies between things and expressed the idea in terms of the law of sympathy he was then able to show that there were two kinds of sympathy there are sympathy based on observable similarity such as that between gold and jaundice and there was sympathy based on contact fraser called these two subtypes of law of sympathy therefore he created a scheme in the form of genealogy religious practices and magic closely related to magic are most forms of religious supplication asking the divine for aid perhaps the most famous form is prayer which is ordained by many religions as a spiritual duty even apart from any effects on the outside world both magic and religion contain rituals typically there is a recognition that rituals do not always work rather it is thought to simply increase the likelihood of the desired result coming to pass while many rituals focus on personal communion with the divine and spiritual purification others often seek magical favorable results such as healing or a good luck in battle most cultures have or have had in their past some form of magical tradition that recognizes a shamanistic interconnectedness of spirit this may have been long ago as a folk tradition that died out with the establishment of a major world religion such as judaism christianity islam or buddhism or it may still coexist with that the world religion likewise both can be divided by the effects they produce into perception and material changes that is whether prayer or some type of spell is used it can bring about an actual change it is material or a change in the way the subject feels that is perception the same prayer or for something to be cooler could be therefore either actually raise the temperature or simply alter the praying subject and any other targets feeling of the temperature this is not to say that perception changes or not real as it could be used in healing a numb the sensation of pain allowing healing to take place more easily religion and magic are two ways of tiding over crisis primitive man must have had a face the realities of life he did so with his belief in some superior power or powers either by trying to coerce in it into service that is by magic or by praying the offering worship to it that is by the religious approach both magic and religion are tools of adaptation the objective being to help man out of a difficult situation and relieve his tensions the two approaches seem to have always existed together and sometimes they come so near each other as almost to blend into each other however it is believed that the magical approach in the more primitive and man must have resorted to supplication only after his ego driven magical approach failed to produce results invariably so students now we'll summarize the whole 
module what we have learned. Anthropological theories of religion have been concerned mainly with examining the content of various conception of the supernatural as prevalent in different societies at different times. The earlier anthropologists also trace the evolution of religion from cruder into developed forms. Recent theories concentrate on outlining the functions of religion. The earliest anthropological theory about primitive religion seeking to stress its origin and explain it was given by Edward Bernard Taylor. He said that although the origin appears to the to be multiple at there there is only one idea underlying it which belief is the soul or anima here hence the name animism for this theory more recently. More recently merit evolved a special form of animist theory which is called manism. Merit said that the entire religious life of the primitive is born out of their belief in a certain understandable, impersonal, non-material and unindividualized supernatural power which takes abode in all the objects animate and inanimate that exist in the world. It lies more or less beyond the reach of the senses but it manifested as a physical force or such other excellences as a man can think of in himself, uh, others and also in objects around him. It may differ in uh, intensi intensity, the degree in which it is present in a person or object, but in essence it is always the same, such a set of beliefs merit called animatism or manism after the term means used by the Melanesian to designate this force. Naturalism is a form of religion where an attitude of awe or love and reverence towards objects of nature is born as a result of diseased mind which invests lifeless things with life and all the powers of the associated with the life. The, this error of mind is according to this theory born out of defective language. Such linguistic errors of the sun rises and sets of thunder sun rains or tree bleep, tree bear flowers and fruits gave rise to beliefs in some power inherent in the sun's thunders, trees etc. Magic is often viewed with suspicion by the wider community and is sometimes practiced in isolation and sorcery in, in non-scientific societies, perceived magic attacks is sometimes uh, employed to explain personal or societal misfortune. Closely related to magic are most forms of religious supplication asking the divine for aid. Perhaps most famous form is prayer which is ordained by many religion as a spiritual duty even apart from any effect on the outside world both magic and religion contain rituals. Typically there is a recognition that rituals do not always work rather it is uh, thought to simplify increase the likelihood of the desire resulting coming to pass. While many rituals focus on personal communion with the divine and spiritual purification others often seek magical favorable results such as healing or a good luck in battle. Most cultures have or have had in their past some form of magical tradition that recognizes a shamanistic uh, interconnectedness of spirit. This may have been long ago as a folk tradition that died out with the establishment of the major world religion such as Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Buddhism or it may still coexist with the world religion. Likewise, both can be divided by the effects they produce into perception and material changes. That is, uh, whether prayer or some type of spell is used, it can either bring about an actual change or change in the way the subject feels, that is perception. The same prayer for something to be 
cooler could be therefore either actually raise the temperature or simply after the praying subject and any other targets feeling of the temperature. So, this is not to say the perception of changes are not real as it could be used in healing uh, to numb the sensation of pain allowing healing to take place more easily. Religion and magic are two ways of tiding over crisis. Primitive man must have had the, to face the realities of life. He did so with his beliefs in some superior power or powers either by trying to coerce into service that is by magic or uh, that is by praying or offering worship to it that is by the religious approach. Both magic and religion are tools of adaptation, the objective bearing to help man out of difficult situation and relieve his tensions. The two approaches uh, seem to have always coexisted together and sometimes they uh, come to come so near each other as almost to blend into each other's. However, it is believed that the magical approach is the more primitive. Man must have restarted to supplication only after his ego driven magical approach failed to produce results invariably.